Hey guys, Joe back at it once again with some OCR FSMQ lessons and today we are doing a re-record of the trigonometric identities and trigonometric equations lesson. So, uh, I might have directed you from that video to this one and uh, and hopefully you've, you've found the right one but there was a couple of mistakes on that last video so I thought I'd re-record it to make sure that you guys um, aren't confused when you see in my wrong answers. But the learning objective is to derive famous trigonometric equations and manipulate them to suit our needs. So, you'll learn to love the trig identities as they'll help us solve lots of problems with trigonometric equations that we'll talk about a bit later. Let's remind ourselves of our lovely soccer tour equations that we spoke about last week, or you know, whenever you watched it. So sin equals opposite over hypotenuse, cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan equals opposite over adjacent. But let's think about this a different way. S equals over H, C equals A over H, and T equals O over A. Now it's not rocket science what I've done there. All I've done is uh, take the first letter of each of the components and plonk them in down here. So S equals O over H. But let's for a laugh divide S by C. But obviously it's not just for a laugh, it's for a purpose. So S over C equals over H divided by A over H. Because an S is that, uh, is an over H, and a C is an A over H. So that's where I've got that from. But how do you divide fractions? Well, you roll the second one over and call it a times. So we've now got over H times H over A. But what happens to those H's is they cancel. Because if you think about this, 1 over 3 times 3 over 2 equals, well, 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. And that actually cancels down to a third. So, no it doesn't, <laughs> cancels down to a half, I was thinking there. So that could have meant uh, getting rid of those and you're just left with 1 over 2. So that's where that comes from there. So the H's will cancel, which leaves O over A. But what is an O over A? Well, we see that pop up here. So an O over A can be replaced with a T. So O over A equals a tan, because it's opposite over adjacent, remember. So that brings us to our first identity, which is that any sin theta over the cos of the same theta will equal tan theta, which I think is a lovely proof. And I enjoyed actually putting this PowerPoint together and, uh, and seeing it all unfold. You don't really need to learn how to prove it. Uh, you just need to learn the actual sin over cos equals tan. But here's another one. Here's Wasaka to our lovely at the top again. We've got a generic right angle triangle. But let's for a laugh this time, square S, square C, and add them together and see what happens. So sin squared add cos squared equals O squared over H squared added to A squared over H squared. Because all I've done there is squared this and squared that. Squared the top, squared the bottom, and added them together. But we know through you know good fraction uh, practice that if you have a common denominator of H, you can just put the addition on the top so it'll just be O squared add A squared and that'll all be over H squared. And what you do next is think about Pythagoras. Pythagoras said A squared add B squared equals C squared. So if we call uh, the generic trig triangle we've got the opposite, we have the hypotenuse and we've got the adjacent. But we're going to call the adjacent this time A squared and, so, well, not A squared, sorry, just A. We're going to call O, B, and we're going to call that C. So that means if we square this and square that, we should get that squared. So that means that O squared plus A squared must equal H squared in this instance, because we're called an, an, an adjacent, an A, an opposite, a, an O, and the hypotenuse is obviously H squared. So doesn't that mean that o, o, o squared plus A squared over H squared must equal H squared over H squared? Because we can replace 
this o squared plus a squared with an h squared and paste it in right here and we know that anything times by itself is just one so that brings us to our second trigonometric identity which is anything squared theta added to the cos squared of the same theta will equal one and we can manipulate that to suit our needs Oop. <laughs> just uh, previewed what's coming up so we've now met with first trig uh, identities and you'll meet some more in core 3 in year 13 involving cot, sec and cosec uh, but you don't need to know about them yet because they're inverse trigonometrical functions which luckily you don't need to know for OCR, FSMQ but there we go here's where we're two trig identities sin, co sin over cos equals tan and sin squared plus cos squared equals 1 but we can manipulate the second one to suit our needs so if we start with sin squared plus cos squared equals 1, if we branch that out and call any sin squared theta a 1 minus a cos squared, because all I've done there is take that over the other side and call it a minus. Similarly, I can call any cos squared a 1 minus sin squared by doing the same process. So there you go. That's just a little thing that we'll possibly use a little bit later on when we're doing with trigonometric equations. But remember these identities, or how to get to them, because you were not given them in the formula booklet. You are, curiously, in the AQA Further Maths uh, course, but you're not um, in the OCR FSMQ. But, you know, learn them. There's only two of them to learn, uh, and you'll be absolutely fine. But here we go. Let's go on to trigonometric equations. So we're going to use our newly found trigonometric identities to help us solve trigonometric equations. But how can we find x in this equation, cos x equals 0.7? What we're really asking there is which angle has a cosine of 0.7. Dan says easy, we just check the calculator. So you get your good Casio calculator, you press shift, or the second function, and shift cos and then type in 0.7 equals and you'll get an answer of about 45.6 in fact I'm gonna do that right now because I can see me Casio staring us in the face so I'm gonna do that and just check that's the right answer and it is it's 45.572996 which rounds up to 45.6 so if you want to check along as as you're going with me go for it but that is not the only answer shock horror now we're going to introduce you to something known as the trigonometric graphs so we have to find the other the other answers that are hiding away from us because if you remember on the last slide I said um, that was not the only answer now these are three very famous shapes this is the sine graph this is the cos graph and this is the tan graph obviously you can see the very famous shapes and very very symmetric so we use the we actually use these graphs to find the other answers um, and things you'll notice uh, if you're good with your graphs is that the the, the cos graph is the sine graph um, moved back 90 degrees because if we look we can draw in a cos graph like this I think I did this a lot better on my other video but yeah you can see similarities with them so sine and cos are very closely related but tan's the weird one uh, we'll talk about him a little bit later on but here we go let's go back to a question cos x equals 0 0.7 now if we go way back in the lessons to when we talked about intersection that's just an equation uh, well, it's not an equation really it's a meeting of two graphs so it's the meeting of the line y or the, the graph y equals cos x which we just talked about and the line y equals 0 0.7 so I've just drawn that in there and uh, you can sketch it in an exam so if we if we um, find where those two points meet then we can get what answers so there's the one that we we'll calculator told her about around about 45.6 I think it was uh, so you can track that down from this position down to the point on the axis and that's about 45.6 but you can see there's another point over here the other one is 45.6 from the other side of the graph because of the symmetry if we think about this distance here from 0 
to 45.6 or the first answer if you want to call it it is the same distance as 360 minus that answer so that's how we work it out for cos we do 360 minus the original answer that the calculator gave you and you will get 314.4 which is which is nice and this is in the range from 0 to 360 you will be told in the exam where you expect it to go because these graphs go on to positive infinity and negative infinity uh, all the same sort of shape that'll come down here and do the same thing and go all the way into somebody else's YouTube video somewhere down there um, and obviously it'll cut at minus 90 here and minus 270 here but you know just just work it out for yourself uh, mostly with that one just be very careful if you if you're given a negative line uh, so if it was negative 0 0.3 or something like that that's a very bad drawing when you type it into your calculator you'll actually get a minus answer so you'll have to add it on to zero or whatever to actually get your answer but uh, there you go there are infinitely many solutions to this problem so here's another question. Solve for x in 0 to 360. So sin x equals 0 0.35. Step 1, draw your graph, sine graph this time, and the line y equals 0 0.35. Uh, that, that's a typo. That should say 0 0.35, and I'll actually alter that here. So there we go. We found another mistake, but this one shouldn't be too bad for the question. Uh, identify your intersection points. So if we get with calculator involved, get x equal 20.5 here if we track down and if you notice the distance from 0 to that answer there is the same as the distance from 180 to that answer there so that means we do 180 minus that answer to get what other one which means it'll be 159.5 degrees correct as if I'm wrong uh, but you get the theory behind that so here's another one for tan this time. Solve for x in the region 0 to 360. Tan x equals 1. Draw your line and graph. So we want the graph of 1 there. If we do the shift tan of that, these are very famous results. We'll get we'll calculate involved. And it's actually 45 degrees, so a very nice angle. And if you love your trig, you'll learn to, to, to know that one, that the, the shift tan of 1 is always 45. And with tan... Uh, it, it's very strange if you add 180 degrees on your answer you will get the next solution because tan solutions come every 180 degrees and you can see that by 0 180 and then 360 so tan tan solutions come every 180 degrees so we simply add that on to get 225 and that's for a tan graph but this is where the fun starts this is kind of what you'd get on the OCR FSMQ we can't do trig with a number we can only do it with a number on one side and the trig on the other basically so we end up with that rearranging and then you're gonna have to divide by five to get sin x equals three fifths and that's the same as before so we we'll draw a sine graph we'll draw the line y equals 0.6 we'll get a calculator involved we'll get those solutions we we'll take 180 minus that answer and you get that solution and hopefully that's that's right I think I did check this before uh, the video so I think that one's right so here's uh, a scarier um, trigonometric equation tan squared minus 2 tan minus 15 equals 0 don't panic um, it's a common type of question just replace the the first letter uh, the the trig with the first letter of it call it t squared minus 2t minus 15 equals 0 everybody knows how to factorize quadratics if you do an OCR FSMQ and we'll factorize that to that get the roots so t equals 5 or minus 3 bring back the trig so tan x equals 5 or tan x equals minus 3 and uh, now we've got two jobs to do with the graph so that means we're going to get four solutions here so if we draw the lines on y equals 5 and y equals minus 3 you'll get that and you can see that uh, they meet four times so we'll get four solutions there 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 and there so that's 78.7 degrees and 258.7 for y equals 5 I believe and there's the other one but when you when you type in the shift tan of minus 3 you will get 
um, minus 71.5, 65 something. But remember, we want it in the range 0 to 360. It says at the top, so we add on 180 to that answer and keep going until we're out of the range. And we'll get 108.4 and 288.4. And finally, this is the last question. So solve for x uh, in 0 to 360. Now, before you jump in and do um, a, a quadratic in sin and cos, we can't have two bits of tr different trigonometry in one question. So we have to turn to a friend, sin squared theta equals 1 minus cos squared theta, and paste that in for where we see sin squared. So now we get that. So 2 lots of 1 minus cos squared equals 5c minus 1. And then we expand our bracket and we get 2 minus 2 cos squared equals 5 cos minus 1. And we'll get that. Take everybody over the other side, and you end up with a lovely quadratic, which may well may well factorise. It does, but just turn to the quadratic formula if um, if you're struggling with that. So two c minus one c plus three equals zero. So factorise that, and now draw a cos graph. So this is where the mistake was on the last video. So you might want to come to this part. <laughs> You know, and, and check out the answers. But there we go. We we'll draw the line at uh, two c minus. Uh, uh, sorry, the the line y equals a half, and the line y equals three, which you'll notice is way off the curve. We'll come to that in a second. So there's the y equals uh, a half. It should be a half, not 0 0.2. And there's the solution. So we get 60 and 330, which is great. So I think that might be where the mistake came in. Let's let's just check that. So 0 0.2. Yes, I think that's where the mistake came in uh, in the last episode. The y was 0 0.2. I've obviously typed that into the calculator and got the wrong answer. But that should be a half there. So that'll be 0 0.5. And get the calculator involved. And we should get 60 and 330. Very, very famous result that uh, cos 60 is a half. And sin 30 is, is a half as well. But we're saying no solution for cos x equals minus 3. Because you can see it's never actually going to hit the graph when it's all the way down here. So we say to the examiner it's going to be no solution. And that is not it. Um, I'll just put that one on there. I think I did that uh, last time. So we'll keep it like that. And I think they are correct. Uh, we'll do the shifts in of two thirds and hope that's right. Yes, it, it's right. Uh, it's just maybe a, a factor out there. Uh, I've rounded a little bit oddly. But you get the idea with that one. So I hope you guys have found this episode helpful. Um, I've fixed most of my mistakes from the PowerPoint before, and hopefully, it's a little bit more clear how you solve trigonometric equations um you know using your calculator and then the graphs after that but if you have found it helpful please leave a like i really do appreciate it leave your feedback down below if you want us to go through anything more on the ocr fsmq i'm more than happy to i'm in the process of doing all the powerpoints for the exam papers and they'll be going up in the coming weeks so uh thanks for watching and yeah i hope you guys uh, you know are having a wonderful day it's the Easter holidays for me right now, so I'm, you know, engulfed in my own revision. But you don't really care about that, do you? You've probably already clicked off the video. But anyway, thanks for watching, and goodbye.